I also feel that the journey from Boulder, which is uh, Trimble Interest Center, uh, through the Grand Canyon, uh, going into the mesas of the Hopi tribe of American Indians, provided one of the most remarkable scenes of the whole tour. Uh, in history, the American Indians have been put down as the local inhabitants of the land who were pushed back in, into reservations with the coming of the white man. But um, their pride in their old history, their following of all spiritual traditions, their guardianship of uh, the treasures of their knowledge has continued unabated, and maybe this isolation in their tracts has helped them to keep everything intact and untouched by the modern world. It's rather like the story of Tibet itself, where all the currents of invasion and so on that shook India did not touch that plateau on the roof of the world. White Bear, who has been called one of the great purifiers and one of the spokesmen uh, of the Hopi tribe, which is the biggest, uh, well, at least the most influential of the um, North American Indian tribes, and his wife, uh, Naomi, who is his devoted attendant and disciple, accompanied his holiness, and a great friendship grew between the two. As we entered the Orabe village and uh, the mesas, His Holiness looked with great interest at the surrounding countryside. The plain, bare, fields where the sheep were grazing, the sharp drop of the rock from the plateau, and he looked with interest at the great new kiva or temple that the younger generation of the village is building. Uh, definitely a time of uh, renaissance, if you like to call it that, a, a time of rebirth for the American Indians and the Hopis particularly. And it's interesting to note they had planned, as it were, they had predicted that there would be the coming of a great spiritual leader. And we are told they predicted that he would have a red hair and be wearing dark red robes. coming in an iron bird, which would be the name of a plane, from another world. And they also said that he would bring the purifying waters with him. Now the extraordinary thing is that His Holiness sat on the top of the mesa and on top of an underground kiva, which was outside the home of the chief of the tribe, a very remarkable and friendly man who was deeply moved uh, by the coming of His Holiness, put his arms around him. And they began to tell His Holiness of their troubles, the main one being that for nine months they had had no rain. So His Holiness said, well, perhaps we can help you in that, and dismiss the subject, and uh, as the younger monks walked into the kiva, the young incarnates, His Holiness sat on top of the kiva and began reciting the prayer of Deva Chen, prayer for the Blessed Buddha field of Amitabha. After that, His Holiness again recited a prayer of Chenrezig, 
prayer for the great mercy, the great day of the Buddhas. And quietly the little ceremony was over. And he walked out of the temple into the homes of the people, watching the small flowers growing out of the rock and made our way down again from the heights to the road level and began walking down to the plains and as we walked down the armies of clouds began to gather and followed the party as we went down the hill the sky which had been a light blue became dark with the rain clouds then we reached the new and beautiful museum that the young Hopis have put up and the motel on the road at uh, Orade. And we prepared for a meeting that was to take place uh, to which uh, the uh, families living in the Mesas, uh, living in the Mesas and also uh, in, the, in the neighboring towns had been invited. About 150 American Indians, mostly Hopis, uh, with the wives and children turned up and His Holiness gave the special crown ceremony and at the end the initiation of Korowa Dongtu, the stirrer of the pit of existence, one of the most powerful forms of Chenrezi in which his skin is represented as being red. This fulfilled the prophecy of the Hopis that His Holiness would bring a red god with him. It was when His Holiness began pouring the lustral water out of the ceremonial vase or bumper that the first heavy raindrops fell and the rain did not stop from that time and poured unceasingly throughout the night. 